Isaac Hernandez. I'm Holly McClure. And this is Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Because entertainment does matter, doesn't it, Holly? It does matter, and it is a part of our culture. It's the parables of today. Absolutely. However, today is not really so much about entertainment. It's really more about a very important issue and something that literally has just broken today or yesterday, really, isn't it? It really is. This The subject we're going to talk about today has, in a rush, come to the forefront yeah. of everyone's attention worldwide, but especially here in America. Yeah, and I got to make a disclosure real quick here, right? You know, because we tape this program at least two to three weeks before it actually comes out. So by the time you see it at home, there may be a lot of new developments based on, on uh, what's happening right now. And, and really, this program uh, you know, stays on demand. So you may be watching it several years from the time that we taped it. But what's happening is literally happening right now as we tape. Holly, can you bring us a little up to date on what it is we're talking about? Well, the Supreme Court just came out saying, of course, well, actually, they didn't come out. Someone leaked that the Supreme Court is making a reverse decision on Roe versus Wade. It has been leaked now. They're, they've got the FBI trying to trace down wow. who did the leak, and they know it's for political purposes. Right. They know it's for the Democrats to kind of give them something to run midterms. But I'm really glad that they brought this subject up because we have a very amazing guest today who has been, this subject has been on her mind for years, not just because of recent events. And right. she put a lot of hard work into this documentary that she did, and it is phenomenal it is it is something that i wish every christian school every right. church you can't do it in public but i wish homeschoolers you need to watch this documentary yeah and you know what what's interesting about this is that up until two days ago we knew we were going to tape a show but we had no guest lined up or anything and then all of a sudden you get contacted by a marketing company that is marketing this particular documentary and it just so happened that the, after we scheduled that, the next day this news broke by the, uh, you know, in the Supreme Court. So I don't know. God, God's got his hand all over. It's a God thing. It? <laughs> it's a God yeah. thing. It's one of those God things, Isaac, and we know it is. Yeah, I know. And I mean, we could do hours on this subject, in my opinion. We, I'm we the do. mother of three, grandmother of eight. I know you're a, a father and a grandfather, and mm -hmm. now this is a very important subject to us who hold dearly the sanctity of life. And um, yes, anyway, let's get let's get her on well, talking about it. Let's, let's get to it. Let me let me introduce our guest. Uh, Tracy Robinson has been in the film and video industry uh, for over a decade, primarily as a video editor. Several years ago, she heard the uh, case against abortion for uh, the first time and was immediately inspired to make her first feature film, The Matter of Life. With a combination of donations and her own funds, the production finally came to fruition. Knowing that four, now this is a very interesting statement here, knowing that four in 10 women who have had abortions attended church the month they became pregnant. Oh my goodness. That astounded me, astounded me. <laughs> that is unbelievable. And so therefore the mission is for, in, uh, in her film is to reach the Christian audience. Let me, let me bring her on right here. Welcome to Faith on Film. Hi guys, thanks for Hi. having me. Thank Tracy, you. thank you for bringing this film to our attention. And I'm just curious, Tracy, are you a mother of kids or aunt or no, single? I'm, 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 a, I'm a cool aunt. <laughs> cool aunt. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, you had this, uh, you know, first of all, I was astounded by that fact. Four in 10 women in church, yes. the month, the month that they got the abortion. Yeah. The month That's... that they got. So this shows the shame and embarrassment of being able to talk about a very tender subject like this at a place where you think that they could. Christians can't go to Christians with decisions like this. It's true. And uh, a statistic that I also learned midway through making this film was that uh, more than half of uh, all, particularly Protestant denominations uh, in, in America are complacent or they're completely silent on the abortion issue. So it made sense to me why you have this staggering statistic of women getting abortions who are sitting in pews. Um, we're just not talking about it. And uh, young women, you know, their worldviews are being shaped by the culture and not the church. So now, that was a huge epiphany midway through for me. Now, why do you think the churches are not talking about it? Well, I think that it's kind of a snowball rolling down the hill. I think that there's so many 
people that have experienced an abortion or been involved in abortion in their past who are sitting in church. Leadership knows that and they don't want to offend anybody. And secondly, I think it's so politically charged. You know, it's not the mission of the church to get involved in politics or or hot button topics like this. The, the mission is the, the gospel. I understand that and I, I sympathize with that. <clears throat> um, but in order to be the hands and feet, excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is going out because of a cold. Uh, in order to be the hands and feet of Jesus, this is a huge opportunity that we have to serve women, to love people unconditionally, and to rescue people that can't rescue our uh, re- rescue themselves, um, just like Jesus did for us. We couldn't help ourselves. And so um, the church has a great opportunity mm-hmm. to love people 40% more. Hmm. You know, you had a list of questions that we were asking, but um, I want to Can I bring up something I want to make sure and say, and I hope it's not disjointed or out of place, but I want to make sure we get to this. You know, Tracy, my heart and feeling is, yes, there's these people on the left and they're just always going to have them who are protesting and, oh, right to to our body, you know, right to women's body, even though we couldn't define women with a Supreme Court justice of, you know, a few weeks ago, we elected the last one. (laughs) And, you know, when we wanted to say our body for vax or no vax, oh, no, you know, it's not your right. It's not your body because you're affecting others. But then when it's a subject of abortion, oh, conveniently, it's our body, our right. So we all can see that there is complete ridiculousness and insanity mm-hmm. on that part. But here's what I've heard slung back, and your film made point of it. Your film pointed out that they're saying, well, if you're pro-life, then you're responsible for poverty. You're responsible for the things that happen after. You're responsible for, the I mean, basically every other crime because we want life, and so there's no way to regulate that. Here's what I'm curious Anywhere in your discussions and interviews, did you ever have any churches or organizations go, okay, look, why don't we take, well, this is my opinion, why don't we take the government funded money that would go, oh, let's say to pay off school loans, why don't we take money and pay women, I know, but pay women to have children who don't want them, cover them through the nine month period, and then have churches and ministries adopt these kids out. There are so many people who would love to adopt children and would love babies, and they're waiting in line for months and years in for infertile people who can't do it. Why can't we as a church come up with some kind of an answer like that, and even if it's not the government paying it, then churches, ministries, people can fund it and to pay for life and to support these women through their pregnancy. Yeah, it'll be inconvenient. Okay, let's figure out a price while you're out of work or whatever. But then you release the baby and then, you know, go on. I don't know. Has it ever been suggested? Well, I think it's a great vision. I think that um, it goes to what I was talking about earlier about the the church uh, being complicit and complacent in the abortion issue. Um, one of my favorite statements at the end of the film is from Brian Fisher, and he, I asked I asked him in the interview uh, what what he thinks the pro life movement needs, and he simply put, the pro life movement needs more engaged people, and I really think that uh, that starts with, and he says it starts with education, <clears throat> and I think that uh, people just aren't thinking about the abortion issue. Uh, and that's where I was coming from. I was in my late 20s at the time when I first heard about it. I was a Christian. Uh, my parents never talked about it. I, I went to public school. You know, I, that really shaped a lot for me. Um, and it just really escaped me. I never really thought about the truth behind uh, what abortion actually is. Um, and so I, I think it starts with education first and a lot of action and people stepping up and and the Holy Spirit moving on their heart, you know, that comes that comes after that. So why do you think there's so much misinformation about the subject? Well, this is a spiritual battle first. Um, I uh, I have realized that over the years, or it's very it's been very evident. <clears throat> um, and and the enemy of our souls, the enemy of humankind, is a liar. And so uh, he's going to uh, infiltrate media and people's um, Mm. classrooms and culture. And um, he's also, uh, he also infuses greed among the people. And so uh, sin is just rampant. Um, Abortion is a very profitable industry. Um, And so uh, the media politicians, you know, they're, they're paid well 
by the abortion industry and lobbyists. <clears throat> and so that has a lot to do with um, where our information comes from. Hmm. What has the response been from those who've seen the film? And what was your biggest surprise in making the film? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, I would say that people are across the board, they're grateful. Um, people that were on the fence uh, before watching the film, or they had just never really thought about the issue before, they were grateful that their eyes have been opened. Um, and then people that have been in pro-life work all their life, perhaps, they, they come to me and say, hey, I saw a lot of my friends in that movie, but I am so re-inspired and I have this renewed vigor to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, Cause you get, you get jaded in the pro-life movement as well. So, um, hmm. so gratitude is, uh, is the common theme. And then um, people are awakened to this issue um, and pregnancy resource centers, you know, the, the directors of those centers who watch it, they, uh, they're grateful that finally somebody is, um, is communicating what they're, what they're all about, uh, to, to people that, you know, it's a way for people to, to support them and what they're doing in their ministry Great. to watch this film. So, well, and I forget I the other part of your, your question. No, the biggest surprise, that's okay. You know, I just was like, mm -hmm. you know, what were you most surprised or shocked at or whatever about making this mm -hmm. film? Yeah, I would say that um, I was surprised that it came together just in the Lord's orchestration of everything. Uh, there were so many ups and downs with, with making this project. Uh, I was surprised at the Lord's provision. Um, and um, I... I would say that the fact that this film kind of be is becoming a rally cry for the church hmm. struck me as well. I, al I always knew that my target audience was going to be faith-based people because those are the people that are going to come uh, first. But I had no idea just how how much how mu how many Christians are actually very pro-choice, and I'm seeing that in social yeah. media now. Um, because yeah. of the the, Do the Dobbs case draft leak, um, people are talking about this, and a lot of them are Christian, and a lot of them are professing to be pro-choice. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a quick little uh, uh, view here of the trailer. That way people can kind of understand what this film is all about. I think this is the battleground culture issue yeah. in America today. How is it that we can trust an organization for whom abortion is such an important part of their business model to simultaneously effectively prevent pregnancy and prevent abortion. The problem in America today is that people simply change the topic. The key to successfully talking about abortion is to try to bring the conversation back to one key question. When you're an obstetrician gynecologist and you're pro-choice, you have to decide whether you're actually going to do those abortions. I believe that being pro-life is the most progressive value that we can have. The abortion industry is most threatened by Christians engaging in pro-life work. Finding that pregnancy center was the only person I had to support me at that time. She's got to know when she takes that pregnancy test that her church is not going to treat her like the Pharisees tried to treat the woman caught in adultery. As a church, we can't just vote pro-life. We have to be pro-love. In your film, it showed how uh, a fetus at, I think, 14 weeks in the womb, the veins, the arms, the fingers, this latest thing that's coming out is they're saying, well, what if you could just agree to get an abortion at 15 weeks? And I look at your film and I went, oh my gosh, even 15 weeks if people look at that, it's murder, it's torturous, there's no way. I mean, this your film is so good in showing yeah. all along the way the development so that people won't think, well, okay, let's just say 15 weeks is okay. No. None of it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm on my, but I just love that point that your film showed. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, so many people really don't know what's going on in fetal development. Uh, that's not something that people are taught in class anymore. It's, it's just wild. Um, it's too controversial. And so uh, I did want to show visuals 
you know, because that speaks a thousand words. Um, when people are confronted with the stages of life in the womb, they're, st they're um, you know, they, they don't know how to answer the question anymore. When do you think it's okay to have an abortion? Because they see how human that human is. Um, and that's really the goal of this movie. And it should be our goal as the, as the you know, Christians and the pro-life movement is to humanize the unborn child because that's where uh, all these problems is, exist is when we dehumanize another segment of the population. You know, I remember when I was a young um, mother, with, well, my first pregnancy, I was about eight weeks along, I'd heard the heartbeat and I had a girlfriend that was a roommate I lived with a couple of years before, after, before I got married. And she called me to tell me that she found out she was pregnant. I'm like, oh, that's great. How far along are you? I, I'm eight weeks. I heard a heartbeat. She goes, well, I'm eight weeks. She goes, but Holly, don't get excited. I'm going to have an abortion. And I remember how that hit me. And I'm like, but, but you heard a heartbeat. I heard a heartbeat. I know you could, because yeah, but it's inconvenient right now. The guy she was living with, it was too inconvenient for them. Well, they ended up getting married and then she could never have children. She tried to have children later and she couldn't have them. And the, I wonder what guilt she lived with, you know, with that. But it, it devastated me because I had heard a heartbeat at exactly the place where she was at. It, it's never easy. Yeah. Uh, that's such a sad story. story. I'm sorry for her. Yeah, <clears throat> so many like that. But um, Isaac, I think you were going to ask about where, how it got funded and when it's going to be featured, I, where people can see it. I was, but I think after what you just said right now, I, I feel really compelled to share a story. It's a very personal story. Uh, I hope I can do it without, you know, getting too emotional. But about, uh, I'm going to say 20 years ago, my daughter got pregnant out of wedlock. Mm. At the time, I was a pastor, a uh, worship pastor at a church, and I have to admit, I got, I was very uh, embarrassed. I was actually very embarrassed at the fact that me as a pastor had a daughter that had gotten pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really, I really wanted her to have an abortion so that nobody would know. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She didn't, and that is my first grandson mm. who has grown up to be an amazing kid. Mm. So I did live, live with that guilt for a while, but you know, then, then I realized, you know what, uh, we, we all make mistakes, and I'm just glad that, uh, that you know, we were able to get, get past that, get through that. And uh, so if you're out there and you feel like, and you're, you're a dad, you're not even the person getting an abortion, but your daughter perhaps got, got pregnant, uh, don't don't let that embarrassment, don't let that uh, that hurt, don't let that pain, uh, kind of drive you into into wanting to do this. Uh, you you'll be you'll be glad twenty years later when you have a wonderful grandbaby. You so will. Woo. Oh, Isaac, thank you for sharing that. In fact, That's Tracy, so amazing. Tracy, thank you, you have in the film you have a, in the film a girl who said her father was a pastor, right? That was one of the testimonies yeah, you had, I saw. Very, very briefly, that was an Embrace Grace clip. Um, they they let me use those testimonies. Um, yeah, that that's very common. It's very, very common, uh, especially in church leadership. I've heard that story more than once, um, uh, wow. many times. And so um, thank God that you have that grandbaby and yes. thank God that Christ loved covers all a multitude of sins there's nothing he can't okay. forgive there's no burden that he can't lift off of our shoulders mm -hmm. because he's taken it on the cross so and even if she did choose an abortion <clears throat> um, all those years ago your sin would still be you know that sin would still be covered by yeah. the blood of jesus Amen. Amen. Um, and so i know there's so many men out there who have been involved in an abortion and they live with that guilt and so I, my prayer for people that uh, are in that situation, maybe they're, they're keeping it a secret, is that this movie sparks them to start talking about it um, and to get that off their chest and, and rescue and prevent that situation in other people's lives. 
Well, okay, now that, now that we're back to that and that I think I'm okay now, uh, a lot of people, I believe, get, you know, God puts in their heart that they need to make some kind of movie, whether it be an entertainment movie or something important like this. I shouldn't say important because entertainment could be important as well. But nonetheless, they don't do it because they let the fact that they don't have the funding just kind of hold them back. And so they're waiting for, for funding mm -hmm. to just show up and it never does. And so they never get to do what, what God has called them to do. You didn't let that stop you. Now, tell us a little bit about how you made all this happen. Yeah, so I uh, was doing video work for a pregnancy resource center. They had commissioned me to do some promotional videos for their for their banquet and um, testimony videos. And I was very inspired by how they were serving women in their crisis pregnancies. But I was, uh, again, I was uh, on the fence in the mushy middle uh, didn't really have a shaped worldview on this issue. Didn't think it was a big deal in the grand scheme of things, abortion. And uh, it wasn't until my friends at the pregnancy center, uh, the staff there, they invited me to an apologetics conference. And that night, the topic was the case against abortion. And so I thought I'd go and, and see what my pro-life friends are talking about. And in less than two hours, the speaker, Alan Schleeman, gave a clear, concise argument for the full humanity of the unborn child. Um, and he invited us to look at abortion imagery. And just my mind was blown by the truth. I was really struck by it. And pretty much immediately that night, I was downloaded. I say downloaded because that's kind of what it felt like. Uh, this this uh, vision for to make this a, a feature length documentary. Um, and that's where it all started. But it, and it I had so many questions on where we got to this point in our society. I had no idea about the, the um, truth behind Planned Parenthood. Mm. I didn't know about Roe v. Wade. I didn't know any of this. I wanted to know, has it always been uh, this contentious? And so um, in the process, I discovered this uh, amazing pro-life movement and the story, like powerful redeeming stories therein. And I just thought, let's put that in the film too. Um, like I, I was going on this discovery journey and I wanted to people wanted people to have the same experience I was um, discovering just how um, just how important this issue is, but just how astounding uh, the journey of how we got here in our in American history. Um, and so by the grace of God, I had the vision. I mean, that was six years ago when I first uh, learned about the pro-life case. Um, I chuckle when I say that because it's kind of embarrassing um, that it took me that long to make a movie. I thought I was going too slow for God, but here oh, there are many people who've been years even more than that <laughs> making a film. Let me right. let me let right. show you exactly. that. Exactly. That's, yeah. yes. that's, that's nothing compared to. <laughs> but I was but, yes, I was just amazed that he kept the vision going. Like there was no point where I felt like I had the option of giving up. I really, in hindsight, see that that was the Lord. And Tracy, um, yeah. and Tracy, I may to interrupt you, but I just want to remind, for such a time as this, mm. Amen. God knew right. this was going to happen with the Supreme Court. God knew this was going to come into focus when it really hasn't been for a couple of years right. or several years. So for such a time as this, that you're having this screening right. in a few weeks and everything, and this is God ordained, I think, yeah. the timing. It really is. It really is. Um, actually yesterday, um, was, or the day before yesterday, <clears throat> um, we were talking very seriously about canceling the theatrical release because low ticket sales. Um, our marketing campaign has been very robust and, uh, we've been working hard, but the problem we run into is people don't want to watch the movie. Um, it's a documentary number one, and it's about a very difficult, difficult topic that nobody wants to think about even if they are pro-life. And so um, it's been kind of um, pulling teeth a little bit to get people to pre-purchase pre tickets. <clears throat> and that's something that's been necessary in order to uh, make uh, ensure that theaters don't cancel on us to make room for bigger blockbusters. And so we are seriously considering just doing an online release uh, instead of uh, doing uh, the theatrical. But then an hour later, uh, this Politico article came out with the leak from the Supreme Court draft uh, about the Dobbs case. And of course, abortion is now headline news and everybody's buzzing around it. And at that point, we decided 
let's keep pushing. Let's keep going. Um, this is relevant to people now. They're like, we believe God will do a miracle. And this is part of it. Has your um, PR team talked to Fox News? Because, I mean, The Five just a little bit ago is talking about it right now. Every major talk format, especially on Fox, is talking about it. There are several that would love to get your film in the focus and say how conveniently it was. So really, I don't know if you're marketing to them, but you should be. Also, I was you. I would take some excerpts, maybe what young people were saying and some of the proof. Maybe come up with a 10, 15, 20 minute short short taken from this film to show to high schools to show to christian schools i mean christian schools churches because they'll watch 20 minutes you know what i mean that focus on and maybe being able to target for the young people so that you're not getting lost in everything i think it's an important documentary for all ages to see i'm just trying to think of ways that you can pull in this younger demographic because they're the ones that need to see this they're the ones that need to hear this message Right. Yeah, absolutely. We have some social media, de- um, social media team deployed uh, to try to reach the younger population for sure. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of avenues and a lot of different roads. We're we're knocking on a lot of doors. So 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 how could people connect with you? Maybe if they want to <clears throat> get more information, perhaps by the time they see this program, the uh, theatrical has already ha- you know gone past. But I'm sure it's going to be on uh, uh, streaming platforms. Uh, but how could they connect with you so that they can keep up with what's happening? If people want to learn more information about the film uh, or look for a theater in their area who's playing it and even get tickets, um, they can go to matteroflife.org. Um, it'll be available to for churches to pre-screen. Uh, there's going to be an extended uh, it's a faith content network um, where churches can host a screening and it and it's an extended part of the theatrical release where they are selling okay. tickets uh for 30 days so um it's a great film to bring to your church yeah well i can't believe how fast this uh, program went holly it just flew keep, by keep it going okay tracy <laughs> stay with us after we close out i want to talk to you some more when uh, it's over like keep it going this has been an exciting topic not that it's exciting in a good way but exciting to yeah. see you've done something you've done something absolutely. for the kingdom tracy amen to you pursuing absolutely. for those six years amen to the people who gave to you and and thank you god for those who funded and, and believed in it and hopefully for others who will as well yeah. you know applause applause you are the okay. esther for the moment and i really hats off to you Hey, man. And folks, don't forget. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tracy. Oh, yeah. I just uh, really covet your prayers. I I ask that, uh, you know, I'm believing God will really um, set a lot of people free and save a lot of lives through this movie. Amen. Well, folks, uh, don't forget, you can write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And if there's anything you want to ask Tracy, we'll we'll forward it to her uh, as well. And don't forget, there's a lot of shows that you can go to YouTube and watch. A lot of our past shows, just go to YouTube and look for Faith on Film uh, TV. Uh, Holly, thank you again for uh, joining with me now that that you're my co-host. And Tracy, thank you so much for taking the time. Folks, until next week, see you then. 